In this Palmyra building, Egbert B. Grandin printed the first 5,000 copies of the Book of Mormon. Egbert B. Grandin's three-story business opened in the fall of 1828 and included a bookstore here on the first floor. The second and third floors housed a book bindery and a print shop. He had been open less than one year when approached about printing 5,000 copies of the Book of Mormon. Egbert B. Grandin was a 23-year-old uh, publisher at the time that Joseph Smith approached him to print the Book of Mormon. Grandin had uh, been in the publishing business since he was 21. He had already published one book, a small book, and the Book of Mormon was a major uh, undertaking for him because it was such a large uh, job. Not only was it a large job that took a lot of uh, technical skills, but it was also a major headache because the uh, local pastors of the churches in the area had already made provisions to boycott it and were preaching against it so it couldn't be sold. Such a large order without solid financial backing did not interest Mr. Grant. In addition, he disagreed with the project on religious principles. However, after further persuasion and Martin Harris's offer to secure the $3,000 project with the mortgage on his farm, Grandin agreed to publish the book. Mr. Grandin managed his business from this office, and it was most likely here that the Prophet Joseph Smith contracted with him to publish the Book of Mormon. The typesetting process in the days of Joseph Smith was a very difficult and detailed uh, process. Everything that you see on the printed page, including space between words, uh, indents, and everything else, required somebody by hand to insert a little piece of metal type. One average page of the Book of Mormon contains about 2,500 separate little pieces of metal. After the type had been set, each sheet was printed on the acorn hand press and hung to dry after which they were taken to the bindery on the second floor. The first edition of the Book of Mormon was bound in leather in this room. The printer sheets came down from the third floor and were here cut in half to make two sheets of 16 pages. These sheets were then folded into what was known as a signature page. A total of 37 signature pages comprised the first edition of the Book of Mormon. The signature sheets were placed in the standing book press, with its screw-like mechanism adding pressure as it twisted down to flatten the pages. To the side of the press is the planing table, at which the folded edges were trimmed to allow them to open for reading. Next, the signature sheets were stitched together with needle and thread at the sewing table, and passed to the gluing table. Leather sheepskin stretched over cardboard for the book cover was attached to the pages and the title, Book of Mormon, was embossed in gold leaf. I'm here with Reed Moon of Moon's Rare Books. And there's a few interesting items that he has that he can share with us, particularly dealing with the first edition of the Book of Mormon. In 1830, in New York, there was a Bible with a black label, seven double-banded gold lines. <laughs> Let's see. Just... Printed in New York, 1830. The size, everything. Is it looks very familiar to me. Looks very familiar. You compare the two. Exa in fact, it lines up even. The, it lines the... up. If you okay. could hold the title page right there. Okay. And then I will open this title page. It's almost everything, the, at the top, by itself. The title, The Book of, Book of Mormon, Holy Bible. You go to the bottom, New York, Palmyra, 1830, 1830. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if this is something that uh, the typesetter knew about. If Joseph requested it, or Oliver, or if he'd be granted somebody, it. Somebody in the mix would have seen this. You don't... Have that close accord. Yeah, it, this is a correlation that's not by uh, accident by any means. Yes.
On March 26, 1830, the first copies of the Book of Mormon were offered for sale in this shop for $1.75 each.